say that like that's what you care about. So let, like, what would you do with this set, right? So, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I feel like what is this site? This is a solicitation site. It's uh, so. Do you think? It, do you think that? Do you think it's? A, do you think it's? Do you think it's that you, do you think the do you think that it's possible that the current way that bids that that contracts in the city are distributed are, are not completely socially equitable? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> do you think I, that I if you could you. demonstrate that to like a high degree in a compelling way, that mm -hmm. that would make a difference? And like, would it certainly like? Would, do you think that could get into the news and like maybe possibly be part of him? Of the campaign to drive yeah, the sure. train. So I agree with a with a business model for it, but I'm just wondering about the validity of a profit taking model for it. Well, that's I mean, the, that, that's more. I think I think that's something that is gonna is gonna depend on the person. Okay. So I'm okay. just saying, like, if this is what you want to do, then if, if what you want to do is make money, then there's there's one way of looking at the site. If what you want to do is to try to like hammer uh, on some like on, on a. a, a, a an equitable resource allocation, you can use the same site and do something else with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, the one thing that I'm curious is why it can't be both. I mean, you can you can take a model that creates, that drives value from uh, kind of spreading out the, kind of making it easier to submit bids and stuff, and also create equitable. And by doing that, you actually create more resources for your equitable mission. So I don't really see why it has to be of, either yeah. or. So to the extent that you care about public services, and to the extent that we do more and more stuff online, like it's trivial for me to order a cat now. It's trivial for me to order a pizza now. But transacting with, with government is still a pain in the ass, especially with stuff that really matters, like getting your kids into school. Just even wrapping your head around getting kids into school is really difficult, and it's mostly a design problem. And the, there's, the culture and incentives of government are not set up to continuously improve the parents' experience of understanding schools and navigating schools. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people out there who specialize in, that, in doing that in the world of design and technology. And for them to somehow plug into making that user experience better, either government has to hire them or they have to pay them. And so we're just talking about one way that that can happen. Sure. So that's, that's one way in which those two things, you know, profit yeah. making and, and kind look, of accessibility. A lot of times it doesn't, right? You know, I mean, a lot of times, like, you, a lot of times people, you, they're just taking, you know? I mean, and like, Actually, that might not be that bad a thing if there are a little bit more of that in Chicago. You know, I think it might, like, I think that, I think many of us would feel more comfortable if there were, like, more companies that would get really, really <laughs> angry if they had got harder to access, right? Are there terms of services about, like, I, I don't know how, what kind of good this is considered, if it's a public good, like a park, or, mm -hmm. or what, are there terms of service? So there, I mean, every website yeah. may or may not have terms of service that will determine whether you can screen the data. So uh, like, for example, I think you mentioned this, one thing that you cannot do in Illinois is you can certainly not scrape the uh, corporate information from the <laughs> Secretary of State's office. There's actually a law, and there's a state law that says that that is illegal. Uh, but on many of these sites, uh, I mean, in these sites, there is uh, like you know you should look every time you think about serving a site for a terms of service. Make sure you're not violating that. Uh, and uh, you know, I mean, and yeah, don't don't break the law. And don't break it. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, is that like oftentimes if, it also depends on what you want to do. If you really if, if it's very important for you to be getting kind of continuous information, you probably do want to build a scraper. Mm -hmm. But if you just need it for a one-time analysis, oftentimes the best way to do it is not scrape, but just contact the agency in question and ask them directly for like data between a certain time period by making a FOIA request or you know some other kind of request. Um, yeah. So I mean the thing is is like this site is like, this site is, it would actually be pretty challenging to scrape. That's like it had a lot of uh, it has uh, it does a lot of things through through post facts and through kind of Ajax stuff that would be a bear. But like, I think, you know, the question, but like, the thing is, that is there a question, is there a business case, or is there something that you want to do that would make it worthwhile, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's ultimately where you should start. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about another example here that I like. So that one is like, you know, I think this one, I think there's a lot of opportunities for something like this to actually do a lot of good stuff, you know? I mean, like, across a whole bunch of dimensions that I think would actually be really useful to people and actually have, you know, either, either make you some money, increase the increase the efficiency of the market, or if you want to go a different direction, like, you know, hammer the city on equitable distribution of contracts. 
this is one is that I think is a little, that it's kind of more of a, this one would be a good one if you wanted to get a lot of social media attention. 